Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on for Mike here, coming at you with a brand new episode of the Memphis Dynasty here on NCAA 12. Also, not featuring any mods. This is just a base game in its pure form, man. And we are 5-2 and two on the year. We're having a good season so far. First season in the Big East. It's going pretty well. And now we move ourselves into non-conference play where we're taking on the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. And on paper, Western Kentucky and, our, and us, we're about the same. They're a C overall squad. We're a C minus squad ourselves. But this game has a lot more significance. And let me tell you why. So Demarcus Mason is on this team as well. And he is eligible to play. However, it's not guaranteed that he ends up starting though as Demarcus Mason is actually in a two quarterback battle with David Brown as well he's a true sophomore so West Kentucky has been bringing in some good quality dudes as of late but that being said still gonna be really excited about it and uh, we actually have some promising things that I wanted to show you guys real fa fast over on the recruiting end I know we haven't signed anybody yet trying to work on that but do have a couple of guys, or at least a guy or two, that has at least soft committed to our program. Jonathan Ross is here. He's a three-star corner from Corbin, Kentucky. He's very close to signing with us. Would love to bring him on to our football team. Corner is one of our needs that we have going on as of right now. And then we also have an offensive tackle. He's only a two-star, but he'll provide us some depth there on the offensive line as well because lord knows we will definitely need that next season oh that being said i'm excited to get our rematch against western kentucky on the way we did beat them last year so let's see if we can make it two of two here uh ever since our backup quarterback did transfer to western kentucky should be a fun one here man so i hope you guys are excited for it if you are make sure you go ahead smack that like button hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel let's go ahead and dive right into this thing let's go get it all right so let's see what we can do to make sure that the master comes out on top as the marcus morrison will drop back on a third and five they're actually going to try to throw over to the right hand side and this actually looks like a big, pretty big play and sure enough it will be demarcus mason here late in that first quarter of action he has western kentucky in a position to get the first points of this game and sure enough they're gonna attack the red zone and they're gonna find the end zone attacking our true freshman that we have in the safety spot and demarcus mason will strike first against his master and western kentucky they will take a seven nothing lead so now we come out with our offense as we try to respond Two to the points that West Kentucky just scored. And we're going to go to the freshman red shirt, Jody Gentry, who's now down the sideline. He's got one man left to beat, and he's able to beat him all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. And Jody Gentry setting an NCAA record for the longest rush in college football history, getting that 85-yard run. And running that football, that is going to be the key for us to be successful here today. Is third and ten, we actually try to pull a fast one, but Western Kentucky they did a, did a big no-no. They pulled on the face mask. So thanks to that face mask, we are able to continue to drive. But we face a third down again. This time it's William Jones who checks in, backup tailback, who's able to make a couple of guys miss, able to do you know a little uh, juke or two. And now, we're closing in on the red zone as well. We want to take our first lead of this game. But facing a third and ten ourselves. We're going to try to run for the first down. Justin Brown actually does get most of the way there. But not all the way. So we do end up settling for a field goal attempt. As Joe Kelly almost gets blocked there. He did almost get blocked. But thankfully, he didn't get uh, completely blocked. Uh, able to get that field goal up. And it's still going to be good so we will take our first lead here in the second quarter of action so with 820 what to play here in the second quarter now western kentucky needs to respond we're going to send the blitz make sure demarcus mason feels the pressure but they call a jet sweep and we're in some trouble now running down the field no one's going to be able to catch him at least not in time 
Touchdown, Western Kentucky in the Hilltoppers. It didn't take them very long, but they will retake the lead. Nice check by Demarcus Mason to keep it 14 to 10. So the Jet Sweep's been working pretty well here today. We got a touchdown off of that. And so did Western Kentucky. We'll see if those Jet Sweeps continue to have success throughout the course of this game. And we'll actually get it out to Brian the Kid, our tight end. He's going to get the carry here and does pick up the first down. We'll see if we can continue our success on the ground. And sure enough, we do. Justin Brown's going to find some space here and get across midfield to move the stinks. And there's always got to be multiple ways to get Justin Brown the ball. We'll go to another jet sweep. This time originally going to the left-hand side. But Justin Brown found a crease in the middle and picked up the first down for us. Although he did hurt himself here a little bit in this game. So for now, William Jones will check in for him. So we go back to our passing. That's what we're more known for in our typically more pass-heavy offense. But we have done a little bit better job as of late having some balance in our offensive attack. As Jones on a third and five trying to pick up the first down, but just nowhere left for him to go. So it was a promising drive for us, but we can't do anything, unfortunately. So we will settle for yet another field goal, and Joe Kelly will sink that through. Does shrink the lead a little bit, but it does not give us the lead. We're still going to be down 14 to 13 after that nine play, 55 yard drive. So now, 13 to 14 to 13 is your score, but we do get a stop on the defensive end. Now we'll see if we can go ahead and take the lead as we try to call corners route. Over to the left-hand side. We throw it early, though. Jamarcus Mason does make the catch, and Jamarcus going to run away from the Hilltopper secondary. Touchdown, Memphis. Let's go, man. Still more used to that NCAA 14 timing versus the timing that it is in NCAA 12. In spite of that, though, still got that job done. And we will take the lead for the first time today. And we're going to look to grow this lead as well. As we ended up uh, getting another stop against Western Kentucky. So we will get the ball back again. See if we can make this our biggest lead. Of the entire game so far. Still got a few minutes left to play here. In the first half of action. But we do run into a third and 22. A couple of sacks really did us dirty there. So we will throw on the third and 22. Brown, he's got the blocks. Can he get to the corner? He does in time. So we actually convert the third and 22. Off the screen of all things. You love to see it. So our drive continues after all, and we'll throw over the middle to one of the customs, Luke McConnell. Haven't really said his name much, but you know, want to give him a little bit more of a role uh, as we continue to progress through this season. Eventually, we'll have a third and down, but I want to convert, though. Third and four, we will try to run up the gut for Justin Brown. Does he get there? He does it. Fourth down, coming up. We're going to risk it for the biscuit. Fourth down. Just need one singular yard. Do we have that extra yard in us? Justin Brown in the backfield. He's going to get the carry. And he's got the blocking. Brown in the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. Justin Brown punches it in for us. And we will take a 27-14 lead into halftime. But not only do we finish the first half with several unanswered points, I think we ended up with 17 unanswered points, if I remember correctly. We do also get the ball to start this second half as well. And Justin Brown, he's really finding a rhythm. He has six yards to carry right now. He has been certifying him as of right now. And Brown, he's going to get some, some blocks of field. He will pick up another first down, even though... Maybe the block on that particular screen was not great, but it was enough to get the job done. And now, another third down coming up. William Jones will go ahead and check into the game. Jones going to go ahead and take the carry. He's got some holes to work through. And William Jones will also move through and pick up yet another first down. So, looking really good here in this second half. First drive going to perfection so far. And we might finish this way off. Willie Duncan with a chance to score. 
if he did not get stuck there for the split second, he was taking that to the crib. I'm really confident of that, but not really even worried about it because Luke McConnell will finish the drive off for us anyways as Luke McConnell finds a soft spot in the zone defense and gets another touchdown for us. Plus, thanks to our special teams, special teams recovers a fumble on the ensuing kickoff. We're up by 20. Might make this 27, but Jody Gentry, he gets stuck at the one-yard line. He was so close. Instead, it's going to be a goal line situation, though, and Richards sees the C part like in the Bible, and Jesse Richards will part the Red Sea of Hilltopper defenders. And we're now looking at a 41-14 lead. We've been playing well so far in this second half. We'll see if we can finish it right here, right now. As we throw over in the middle to Jody Gentry on a third and short. And he will pick up the first down. Really like how these custom guys have been developing. You know, they have really uh, taken a bigger role in this offense here uh, in this game specifically. But it will be the backup tight end that will put us in a 34-point lead really leaving western kentucky in the dust and that is going to wrap things up here memphis looked great in this game they played at an extremely high level they <coughs> they had me struggled there in the first half a little bit didn't like how we were playing on def defense but once we were able to lock them down it was a barbecued chicken and this offense really produced an extraordinarily high level in this one so it ends up being our biggest win of the season as jesse richards ends up having a pretty nice day three touchdowns 271 yards as well and out duels to marcus mason who had a rougher time today 12 for 32 187 yards and a touchdown in this one but at the end of the day it was completely a team effort and some young custom guys they really stepped up today Justin Brown's your typical suspect. He had 15 carries for 89 yards. Also had that touchdown to go with as well. But a few other guys found the end zone as well. Jesse Richards found the end zone. And then Jody Gentry of a freshman red shirt from Mississippi. He ends up with nearly 100 yards rushing off of almost two of just two carries. Almost at 100 yards too, but couldn't quite make that happen. We did have another receiver that was a custom, one of your guys' customs that found the end zone. That was Luke McConnell, true freshman, had four catches for 57 yards today. Jamarcus Mitchell also had a touchdown. He had 94 yards off of four catches. And then Daryl Martin, senior tight end, man, coming through, making big plays. Two touchdowns, three catches, and 28 yards. So then defensively, we also stepped things up, especially after... First quarter and a half, it was a little bit shaky at first, but hey, they really stepped things up after that second touchdown allowed on the jet sweep, by the way. Um, Pat Taylor did lead the team in tackles today. He had four tackles in this one, followed by A.J. Kaysen, Reggie Franklin, and another custom player, Dan Daniel. He's a true freshman, by the way. We also got to Demarcus Mason a couple of times today. Pat Taylor had a sack, and then A.J. Kaysen was also able to get a sack in here as well. And I don't think we forced any turnovers. We'll go ahead and check real quick to see because sometimes we do get some forced fumbles in here. And sure enough, Brian Kidd will actually force the fumble. That's why we're able to uh, have a quick red zone opportunity after we scored. And he actually recovered that fumble as well, uh, pulling a Jadavius Clowney. So you love to see all that. Hopefully this means we can finally get some recruits. So we'll head back to the lobby real quick and see if that's the uh, end result for uh, this game. All right, so we actually went ahead and simulated a couple of weeks because we actually had a bye week after that Western Kentucky game. And we actually finally have a recruiting class. We brought in three players in the past couple of weeks. We brought in free star defensive end Walter Anderson. So that's going to be a nice pickup for us because we did definitely have a need there on that defensive line. But we also brought in a couple of different people as well. We did also bring in another free star in Jonathan Ross. He's a free star corner from Corbin, Kentucky. So that'll be a nice add to continue to build our defensive backfield, have those quality uh, level of guys. And then we also managed to bring in Darren Rich as well. 
He's only a two-star tackle, so I'm not too terribly excited about that, but we do get some depth on the offensive line, and it does meet one of our needs. Now, that being said, we did also miss out on a couple of people. Derek Little was someone that I really wanted to bring into our program. He's a high-end three-star, but he is deciding to play his college football at Georgia Tech instead, so the war of the power five could not bring him uh, towards our direction, unfortunately. Um, that's really the only notable guy that I see in here for now, but you know, we just got to keep working that recruiting trail so that we can continue to build our recruiting class. That's not very big at the moment. So I wanted to get a second game in this episode since frankly that Western Kentucky game was not really much of a challenge for us at all. So we'll go into one of our non-conference games, but this will not be considered a non-conference matchup for long. Navy, there has been some rumors that they are thinking about joining the American Conference here uh, pretty soon, but for now, this will be a non-conference matchup as Navy is currently one of the independent schools that we have here in this universe, and Navy, you know, it's going to be a unique challenge for us. Navy, they, of course, are traditionally one of those triple option squads, and we haven't really done with the option before, and frankly... Uh, when we have lost, it's usually because we can't stop the run. So being able to key in on that run game, that's going to be really important for us. As well as getting a great start off on offense as well. That's going to be a really important thing for us too. Because if we can get Navy blown out here, then we're going to be able to come out here and possibly get Navy in an uncomfortable spot. And I'm sure this is going to make a lot of Naval Academy grants very uncomfortable. William Jones... Right down the center of the field, Jesse R Richards just throws an absolute rocket. No chance that anyone's going to be able to catch up to William Jones in the open field. And we're going to be able to take the early lead. We also get a safety as well, able to get a safety off screen. But we do manage to get another touchdown. And that touchdown does give Jesse Richards the school record for most passing touchdowns in a collegiate career, he has 80-plus career touchdowns. Imagine that. That is some great football action there. And we will go ahead and really blow this thing up as well. I thought this was going to be a game where we're going to be able to go ahead, call the backups in as well, considering we're going to be up 26-3. And especially given what happens here as we intercept Antoine... Uh, or at least Antoine Curtis makes the interception as well. All, takes it all the way. And we even do that little Heisman dive into the end zone. Oh no, something about that dive I really like about it. But I also really like how we're playing in this game as well. We do not take Navy for granted. And we quickly make this a 30 point lead. 33 to 3 ends up being your score. But then... Navy, they go back to work here, trying to get it out to the left-hand side. Breaks the tackle, breaks another one. Wait a minute, there's a fumble on the ground. Taylor is going to recover it. Let's go. And not only that, we also end up with a face mask penalty. So we move the ball 15 yards in the other direction. And we use that to get a field goal. So we're up 36 to 3 right now. Thinking about maybe getting the backups in even earlier, except Richards gets caught trying to throw that football as pressure comes at him. And we're going to see a big boy touchdown, not from one of our guys, unfortunately. Navy is going to force Jesse Richards to go ahead and fumble the football here real quick. And just like that, Navy gets his first defensive touchdown of the game, but we're still up 36 to 10. So. Just got to clean things up a little bit, but I just don't want to uh, change how we play football. We're going to keep playing how we want to play, but Navy is really locking things down here in the second half. They did a pretty nice job of making adjustments. And again, Jesse Richards fumbles the football. This is not like him. That's the second time that he puts the ball on the ground. And now 36 to 10 is your score. So not where we want to be. But that's what we got going on as of right now. As now, fourth down coming up. We'll see what Navy decides to do. And they're going to actually try to run it with the fullback. The fullback gets into open field. Breaks a couple of tackles. Are we going to blow this game? It certainly feels 
that kind of direction right now. Navy's touchdown there makes it a free possession game, which is still a lot to overcome in just one quarter. But we do eventually get our stuff together. Towards the end of the game, Ryan Towns is going to intercept this pass. Brings it out of the end zone, which is an interesting choice. But I think momentum was just kind of carrying that way. So we'll have to start this drive out at the one yard line. We'll have to do a tad bit of work to make sure that we don't end up with a safety. And not only will we get it eventually out of the shadow of our own goal line, but we're going to run it here for Justin Brown at the end of the game. And he's actually going to go out here. He's going to score, but what we'll also try to do, trying to get that remaining time off the clock, make sure it hits zeros, and that might have hurt us in the long term. Justin Brown is going to hurt himself on really the last play of the game. So hopefully Justin Brown's injury does not hurt us in the long term. Hopefully that is just a minor injury and we'll have him back next week because we're going to play some pretty good opponents here in the last few games of the season. So I would really like to have Justin Brown, our best player that we have on the team, arguably. I would like to have him in those games, right? So that, that being said, great win for us here, too. We're going to go 2-0 here in this episode. And that's even with Jesse Richards not really playing his best, under 50% on the completion percentage. But did miss, throw a couple of touchdown passes, did lose a couple of fumbles here as well. But Justin Brown with something else on the ground. 246 yards rushing. You cannot make this up. He was playing some great football today. William Jones was not bad either, the senior. He had five carries for 43 yards, so you love to see that. Uh, but as for our receivers, receivers played pretty well today too. But we did end up with a 100-yard receiver. Chris Washington and William Jones did find the end zone as well. Jones actually had our biggest uh, play of the day at 70 yards. Uh, at least our biggest passing play. But of course, the defense, which this defense, you know, it's had its fair share of struggles with stopping the run. They actually did a pretty good job stopping the run, and it forced them to be a team that they don't like to be, and that's a team that has to pass the ball quite a bit. So we ended up getting a few sacks, and we also got multiple interceptions. And Quan, uh, Tawan Curtis, he returned things back to the crib, and then Ryan Towns also had that interception towards the end. Dan Daniel and Josh Meadows were also able to force some fumbles today. So the Customs really playing good football here. As Pat Taylor was the one that ended up with the fumble recovery. And what can I say? Josh Meadows also had the safety. But after things unfolded for us on the football field against Navy, we did actually did bring in a couple more recruits. We bring in a free star in Jonathan Ross. He does go from being a soft commit to us over to a hard commit. So that's a real good sign for us. And then we also bring in the three-star quarterback, Robert Arby. I don't see him playing in the foreseeable future. You know, build some depth at that quarterback position. But you can never have too many quality quarterbacks. And I think he'll be a good signing for us when it's all said and done. So in this episode, we end up seeing two games instead of one. So a little bit of a double header for your special treat. And we also ended up with two wins. So we finish with a 7-2 record in this episode. We still have a few games left to go, including a couple more games in conference play. We're going to keep things rolling here as we go against the Houston Cougars in the next episode, going down to the great state of Texas to play some good old college football. So it's going to be a fun one. I'm really excited about the opportunity to play against Houston as we continue our first season through the Big East Conference. If you guys are excited as well, I need you guys to go ahead and do me a favor. Smack that like button for me. Hit that subscribe button as well if you do have to be brand new to the channel. I would truly appreciate that. And it really helps me out with that YouTube algorithm as well. With that being said, this is John Shea Gaming on the mic signing off. I'm hoping you guys are out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.